So I had this idea that I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to shoot this in chronological order. So I'm going to shoot it as I'm learning things about this, and I'm kind of curious what I am going to learn, because today I want to cover everything there is to know about the ally currency or the ally points, the little silver coins you get in the game. So let's see what we can learn about it. Okay, so real quick, I wanted to figure out how do I get ally points? Yeah, or are they tied to energy? So this is a 10 and I got 30. So let's go do a 20. And we got 60. So it does look like it's three ally points per energy. That answers the first question there. It's actually interesting is Cantina, it's not, it's five for one. This is 120 energy spent here and I got 600 points. So I've learned something already. Now in challenges, they did remove in the post earlier, which I'll show in a second, that removes the ally points from challenges. So you're not gonna see any more ally points here. They nerfed it, but I'll explain why in a moment. So a while back, and by a while back, I mean October 18th, 2018 at 1.10 a.m., um, they made an update here to remove ally points from events and challenges. Now they said that because uh, blah, the blah, the blah, the long story short is they want to do more with the ally points right here, like additional items and weekly shipments and address some of the concerns we have for people with too many ally points. Basically, they, uh, they had a problem where we're just stacking bazillions of these things, and if they start giving us gear and all that for ally points, um, it's going to be too expensive for them. Unfortunately, by do more, what they mean is really noob trap you. Here is 10 Carbontes. Um, for 50k ally points. I have just shy of 50k ally points. So I'm going to go ahead and do these and let's see what I can get for my 50k ally points. I'm going to begin. I'm sure I'm going to speed this up because it's going to be a while, but go ahead and watch me get carpal tunnel here for the rest of this. So that was a fun and interactive experience inside of the game. And now we're gonna to go to the shard shop and see what we got. So instead of 10 Carbontes, what I got for my money was 1,290 shard shop currency. If we take a look at the options available to purchase, you can quickly start to realize that maybe the, this is not such a wise purchase in the weekly shipments. I'm gonna do a quick refresh just so you can get an idea. And oh my goodness, look, there's some Carbontes right there. It looks like I would not trade four more Carbontes for 1,155 shard shop currency. So in my opinion, only purchase the Omegas, don't purchase the Carbontes. A quick Google search will find you tons of pictures of this as well as they like to pop up on the Reddit. So the question remains, is it smart to hoard ally points? I do not believe so. I don't think it matters personally. I think maybe if you want to make sure you can always purchase Omegas if they show up, or maybe you have like 200K in case one day they decide to drop a Zeta in the weekly, that might be smart. To save up obscene amounts, I don't really think has any purpose unless you're wanting to just store kind of pseudo hoarding gear. I could get it, but even then, why not just transfer it over and start purchasing gear in the shard shop currency? So to answer the question of hoard or spend, I spend mine just so I don't have to go through that carpal tunnel again when I decide to spend five and a half million ally points, but it's up to you. So I've been looking up the history of ally points and probably by far the most interesting fact that I've found is the old tournament system. Now I, I wasn't around when this was in the game, but it is an interesting thing to read up on. I'm not gonna read it all for you, but I'm gonna give you the breakdown of it. Basically, they had a tournament system where you would spend your ally points as like tickets to get into the tournament, and then you would like try to get 
uh, points once you're in the tournament. The person with the most points receives prizes. Uh, similar to a raid in sorts, right? But the ally points were like tickets to get into the thing. The problem is this ended up being scrapped later down the road um, as cheaters would go in and post ridiculous scores, you know, regardless of anything. Much like we'd see people with like level one Phoenix, gear one Phoenix, you know, getting seven star Thrawn. The cheaters were ruining this for everybody as they do in most things in life. And so unfortunately this idea got scrapped but it made me think we have this ally point system which is basically just additional shard shop currency via the form of bronzeams and not much else and there's a lot of talk of sandbox and public testing right now and wouldn't it be a cool idea and i know they don't want to do sandboxing because if you can just test gear 12 jedi knight anakin why would i want to purchase a gear 12 anakin which i fully understand but how about a balance how about for a very hefty fee, let's say 50,000, 100,000 ally points, whatever it is you feel fair to charge us, we get to rent a character for testing purposes that is not allowed anywhere outside of, let's say, hard nodes or normal mo nodes, even if you don't want to give us hard nodes. So let's say I pay a 100k ally fee to you, you give me a gear 12 Jedi Knight Anakin, and I, any battles I do on that node would not be three starred, but I can see the character. If I want to go beat up some battle droids, I can, and I can at least play with them. This, if anything, it will incentivize revenue as this allows you to get excited about the character, but you still haven't unlocked him because you can't use him in PvP, territory battles, territory war, nowhere that matters. You can only play with the character, okay? So this is an idea that I thought could be very interesting. I don't know how applicable it is. I don't know how if they have a system that like would let you use a character temporary, but I know they have a system that allows you to borrow someone else's character, and we know they have a system that allows um, them to generate random fake players. So what if we could spend ally points and they generate random fake players and give us like that Jedi Knight Anakin or something. Very similar to being able to borrow a friend's character, which we can already do from a guildmate or something. But this takes out the difficult, takes away the difficult process of saying, calling up your friend being, hey, can you put Jedi Knight Anakin in the leader slot so I can try him? What if CG offered that service for us? So I'm going to throw that idea out there as a potential for something to do with the ally points. Obviously, I have no way if they could implement it, but it was an interesting idea as I had while I was looking into the ally point system. Okay, so I was wanting to like test how this worked, and there happened to be a node that I had three stars, so I'm like, let me just go mess around with it. And if you look, it's like they offer you, obviously, whatever character they used last in the leadership or something. But then as you go over here, there's all like these fake characters like Earth Rim Walker 1, right? Like that's not someone I have on my friends list. That's a level 60 character, right? And you can use it and gain ally points for using their thing, right? But this is a generated computer player. So what if instead of you will earn plus nine, what if they changed it to, well, you will minus 50,000, but this character is full Jedi Knight Anakin, right? Like maxed one. But they give us they give us a range, you know, it's like Jedi Nyak and General Kenobi, Treya, you know, like all these different characters. We can already do it, so we know they're they're okay with it, but why not like give us the option to to borrow it from you, CG? And, and it won't cost you anything, you already can do it, just you have to change it a little bit, right? Um and I can al and we can already do it for free because like I could get my buddy Gaz here, who I don't even think he's on my friend, so I don't know. Andy beats, I know that's a real guy, right? Like I could be like, hey Andy. Yo, can you put um, like a different character in, you know? I can already do it. Anyway, just an idea, okay? I thought it was I thought it was an interesting concept. So you're welcome to tear apart the idea why it would never ever work anyway, but I actually have to like borrow this and beat this node in a three star now. So that's basically it. I, I thought it was kind of interesting just to kind of look at the history of ally points. Learn, I learned a little bit about them. Like I didn't know Cantina nodes gave you five, but normal gave you three and fleet gave you three. You know, there's a little bit of interesting points there. I did think it was interesting that um, even though Cantina gives you five, when they put ship nodes in there, they didn't make those five either, even though it's the same energy cost as Cantina. You would think that, you know, you go here and you're like, I'm gonna do one of these, right? And you, it's eight energy, it's three each. You would think they would pay you out the same as they're asking uh, that's another topic though, okay? But let me know um, 
What do you think of the idea of the sandbox idea? I'm just curious. I came up with it off the top of my head while I was doing this video. And uh, let me know if you're interested in these type of videos, because I kind of think it'd be fun to cover stuff that like people already know, but you know, maybe learn a little bit history about it, or you know, just talk talk about topics maybe that everyone knows, but just kind of do a video covering them. I thought it was fun. Anyway, uh, shout out and thanks to my patrons and recent subs. Thanks to everyone who's been joining me in the live streams. Hello to the subreddit, and I hope everyone has a good day. Okay, bye bye.